Welcome to another episode of Chemistry from Jay's House. I didn't collect homework, I didn't go over homework, but I know what you guys are thinking. Jay sure talks a lot, but clearly you yelled what's the point because <laughs> who wouldn't? Okay, I am under the impression that this is supposed to happen on Star Wars Day. May the 4th be with you. Uh, that date might be wrong, so if that date's wrong, put the right date on. Skip a line, go all the way left, and write the point. So let's find out where the... That's oh, kind of like here. Is that on screen? It is! Hey! How are strong acids and bases Related to weak ones. Now, I'm aware that there is a difference. I'm aware that if I get soap on my hands, that's a good thing. My hands get clean. I get lye on my hands. That's a bad thing. The skin falls off of them. So I know that <laughs> experientially, these things, the strong ones, are very different than the weak ones. But the question is how? Well, let's find out. So skip a couple lines if you're taking physical notes. And strong acid or base. What is that? It's an acid or base? No way. where most of the particles react. Then we should find out what a weak acid or base is. And that is an acid or base, again, where only a few particles react. Those are the notes for the day, so do me a favor, pause, write it all down, and then join us again. So pause, welcome back. Okay, so this is somewhat obvious, but it's worth taking some time and looking into what it really means. So uh, first thing, let's get, the, let's get some board space back. No, no, my eraser isn't very good. Eh. Moving on with life. We have to remember how an acid or base works. So let's start off with an acid. The way an acid works is it's only an acid if it has an acidic hydrogen. Remember, it can be monoprotic, it can be diprotic, or it can be triprotic. What about quadruprotic? Doesn't exist. Not as far as we know. So what happens is an acid floats around in its cute little acid world with these acidic hydrogens, and then it comes to, I don't know, what, what should we do? Uh, we'll do my thumbs up hand with the world's largest thumb. That is terrible, Jay. Oh my gosh, don't tell me when I drew that. That was a horrendous thumb. Okay. And I know that you guys are all about it being accurate. So there we go. There's all the hair on my arm. I'm aware that I'm a hairy dude. And I even have some on my knuckles. <clears throat> I'm part Neanderthal. And the acid gets splashed on my hand. Psh. Now what the acid actually does is it donates protons to my hand. Ah! We can get the sizzle lines. It's, it's, 
Ah! And once this acid has donated all the protons, it's no longer an acid. And now it's just a fluid on my hands. And if this got on my other hand, who cares? Doesn't have any acidic hydrogen, it's not gonna hurt me. Awesome. So remember, that's how an acid works. So what's the difference between a strong acid and a weak acid? Well, let's talk about that. So now, instead of using this as the acid, we're going to use little globs, little green globs. And each one of these is, let's think of it as one acid molecule. Okay, so there they are. Now, are they acid molecules right now? No, they're not, Jay. Why not? They don't have acidic hydrogens. And if you don't have an acidic hydrogen, you don't get the fun name acid. It's a really good point, other me. So let's make sure they're acids and let's give each one an acidic hydrogen. Okay, and now we'll do just a section of my arm because we're zooming in big time. And now, of course, the section of the arm has like huge hairs on it. There you go. So we're zoomed into a section of my arm and the acid spills on it. So these guys are flying through, they get onto my arm and if it's a strong acid, then what's gonna happen if this is like a pH of zero, all the way down at the end of the pH scale, then what's gonna happen is every single one is going to donate its acidic hydrogen to my skin, and that's gonna be a bad day for my skin. That, because everyone donated, that is a strong acid. And it's also no longer acid. There we go. So strong acids, once they react, they are dunsies. Everything's been given, and they're not acids anymore. But what if we reset? So reset, go back in time, jump in with Mr. Peabody into the Wayback Machine, and I'm no longer burning, and it's no longer strong. This time, let's mix it up a little bit, and let's do, I don't know, a weak acid. So again, the acid comes in contact with my arm, but now it's a weak acid. Now I like to think of weak acids as teenagers. I'm like, hey guys, I've got this great idea. What if we all donate our acidic hydrogens to our science teacher's skin? Then we could burn them. And everyone's like, I love that idea. That'd be hilarious because you'd have a burn and it'd be a chemical burn, which are kind of terrible to heal from. Yay! And then the one acid goes, okay, let's do it. Ha! And everybody else goes, uh, well, you know, I mean, like right now, like, like we're going to donate our acidic hydrogens like now, Ugh, this is not a good time for me. And we get like the slightest little sizzle and every other acid goes, you know, maybe next week or like next month, that, that'd be a lot. But you know what? Talk to me at the end of the month. And maybe then I'll be able to fit some time in to give my acidic hydrogen or something. But right now, it's just not, I, I'm not in. I'm sorry. I mean, I love the idea, but I'm out. And this is a weak acid. Most acids retain their acidic hydrogens. And this is when a weak acid reacts, very little of it actually reacts. So this is the only guy that is no longer an acid. These are all still acids. Now, granted... They tend to still hold on to their, so if somebody else's arm, you know, I take this glob of acid off and I throw it on somebody else's arm. Again, probably only one, maybe two are going to react. Weak acids tend to retain their acidity. But that's not super worrisome because they retain their acidity so much that they tend to not burn stuff. So if it's a weak acid, only one or two of the molecules would react. A, few, a small number would react, and the other ones are just too lazy or busy to get around to do it, right? So that is the difference between 
a strong acid and a weak acid. Strong acid, everybody go, woo, let's do this. And a weak acid, only one or two. So now let's switch gears. Let's go from acids to bases. So remember how bases work, all right? So a base comes in, it gets thrown on my arm. Nom, 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 nom. And what it does is different. It pulls protons out of my arm. It eats the protons out of my arm, causing an even worse burn. Ah, I really need that. That's super painful. And so bases eat protons. They suck protons out of whatever they're on if they can, and now once it gets full, it is no longer a base. So it would lose its name and be like, oh, I can't eat more than two protons, are you kidding me? Oh, summer's coming, I gotta fit into my swimsuit. I'm done. And now if this base got on somebody's arm, it wouldn't burn at all because they're full, they're not gonna pull a proton off your arm. So now let's look at this, that's how bases work. Let's talk about the difference between a strong base and a weak base. So we start with the arm again, and instead of using the paper cutouts, we're going to use little globs. So now what happens is we have molecules of a base are on my arm. Uh, one of you terrible students have done that to me, and I shake my fist at you off camera. And now, if it's a strong base, what's going to happen is each one is going to pull a proton out of my arm and burn me. And every single one will pull a proton out of my arm and burn me. 